If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you already know what a jet engine is. But today I'm going to explain to you exactly how a jet engine works. In my video discussing the four forces of flight, I discussed the importance of thrust. So if you're unfamiliar with the four basic forces of flight, go ahead and click the link up above and watch that video first. There are two basic types of jet engines that I'm going to talk about in this video. Those two basic types of jets are turbofan engines and turbojet engines. Turbofan engines are mostly used in commercial aviation. So much so in fact that almost every single commercial airliner uses turbofan engines. This is due to the fact that turbofan engines are the most efficient engines at transonic speeds. Not only that, but they're also quieter than other engine types. If you watch my video on rocket engines, you're already familiar with the concept of internal combustion engines. Jet engines also work on the principle of internal combustion. But these engines are highly optimized for thrust and efficiency. This large fan at the front of the engine sucks the free stream air into the engine. From there, the air is actually diverted or bypassed around the engine. This process, known as a bypass system, makes the engine quieter and more efficient. In fact, the more air that is bypassed, the more efficient the engine. From there, the remaining portion of the air that wasn't bypassed is then diverted into what's known as a compressor. A compressor, as you may have guessed, compresses air. The compressor stage consists of a series of narrowing fans that squeezes the air that prepares it for the next stage. After the air is squeezed in the compressor stage, it's then funneled into the combustion chamber. And as you may have guessed, the combustion chamber is where combustion happens. You smart. It's here where jet fuel is injected into the air and ignited. The now hot air is then funneled through a turbine. The air turns this turbine, which in turn turns a shaft that turns the fan at the front of the engine. As this fan turns, it sucks more air in, so this process can be continuous. After the air is passed through the turbine, it then mixes with the cool air that was bypassed in the beginning of the engine and is ejected out the back of the engine. This exiting of hot gas out the back of the engine is what produced thrust for the plane. Now you may not have remembered all of those steps, but there is a very simple way in which you can remember all of the steps of a turbofan engine. To summarize, a turbofan engine works in four simple steps. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. The air in a turbofan engine is sucked in with the fan, squeezed with the compressor stage, combusted at the combustion chamber, and blown out the back after the turbine. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. The second type of jet engine I'm going to talk about is a turbojet engine. A turbojet engine is most commonly used in military and high performance aircraft. This is because they are better at producing thrust based off of their weight. Or in other words, they have a better thrust to weight ratio than turbofan engines. Turbojets are what's known as low pass engines. Or in other words, only a small portion of the air is bypassed or diverted away from the engine, unlike a turbofan engine. This low efficiency actually ends up supplying more thrust than the turbofan engine. Turbojets work in a very similar way to turbofans. The main and most obvious difference is that they don't have a fan. Instead, the air is fed straight into the compressor stage. After the air passes through the compressor stage, it's then fed into the combustion stage. From there, it's fed into a turbine, which in turn turns the shaft that turns the compressor at the front of the engine, and then exits the turbine. Now in high performance military aircraft, there can also be another stage after this. This stage is known as an afterburner. The main purpose of an afterburner is to increase thrust. The afterburner is positioned after the turbine, but before the nozzle of the engine. When the air gets to this point of the engine, it's then burnt again, or in other words, combusted again. That makes this the second combustion stage in the engine. That means the remaining oxygen left in the hot air is burnt again and increases the exit velocity of the air even further, thus increasing the thrust of the aircraft. However, the afterburner is not used during the entire flight. It's only used when necessary. The typical times at which the afterburner are used are during takeoff, to achieve supersonic flight, and to perform high-speed aerial maneuvers. The reason the afterburner isn't always used during the flight 
is because it's incredibly fuel inefficient. That being said, without the afterburner, most fighter jets wouldn't be able to achieve supersonic flight. After the afterburner phase is the nozzle. The nozzle of a high performance jet engine can actually be one of the most expensive parts of the engine. The reason for this is because the nozzle of high performance jet engines is often adjustable. These nozzles can narrow or expand to increase the acceleration of the aircraft. Some nozzles can even do more than that. Modern fighter jets are starting to adopt a technique known as thrust vectoring. In other words, they're changing the direction of the thrust of the aircraft to make it more maneuverable. For instance, in the F-22 Raptor, the nozzle can move up and down to enable vertical thrust vectoring. This enables the aircraft to perform incredibly tight high-G maneuvers. The nozzle found in the F-35 is even more complex. This nozzle has the capability to be turned down 95 degrees. This allows the aircraft to perform what's known as short takeoff and vertical landing. Jet engines are extraordinarily complex pieces of machinery. They are the result of over 150 years of innovation and perfecting the internal combustion engine. If you enjoyed learning about jet propulsion today, make sure you check out my video talking about how rocket engines work. I'm going to go ahead and link to that video right here. So if you learned something about jet propulsion today, go ahead and like this video. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.